Hello! I am back again because I once again felt like it. Uh, you know, I woke up this morning and I thought to myself that getting dressed and talking to this camera would give me some sort of like knockoff version of joy. So anyway, I am here to talk to you about quilts. Partially because I live in Montana and I'm perpetually cold, but also because I have made some quilts and this is another video about sewing, uh, but also about like having a hobby and about people that I love and maybe like a tiny bit about grief. This is not going to be a making stuff vlog. I will be right here for the duration of this video. There's a bunch of additional context for my larger relationship with sewing that I tried to talk about in the intro to my sewing vlog, but I wound up cutting most of it because the video was just way too long. Quick recap. As a teenager, I had briefly decided that I wanted to learn how to sew. Actually, uh, one of the earliest dream jobs that I remember having was fashion designer, which mostly meant that seven-year-old Nicole drew a lot of women with like big drapey sleeves. I sincerely hope that seven-year-old Nicole would accept and embrace 32-year-old Nicole's puffy sleeve obsession uh, as a substitute. Anyway, when I was 15, my mom bought me a sewing machine for either my birthday or Christmas. Honestly, I cannot remember, but like the important thing here is that I didn't actually learn how to use this sewing machine until last Thanksgiving when I was in Missouri and my mom, who has been sewing since middle school and is extremely talented, spent that weekend teaching me how to sew. And since then, I have just kept at it. I was already spending a ton of my free time sewing before I was no longer allowed to leave my house. So then I just like fully replaced any time I had been spending with people with time with my sewing machine. Back in December, 2019, I found a pretty manageable looking and like clear tutorial on YouTube for making your first quilt, which I will link in the description. The quilts are very tiny. They're like crib quilts. Maybe you could use it as a wall hanging. Uh, I followed along that tutorial to make quilts for my niece and nephew who are tiny humans and thus could use tiny quilts. Over the course of the many, many hours that it took me to make those two very small quilts, I made a lot of mistakes, but they were mistakes that I genuinely enjoyed making. I mean, some of it was annoying, but mostly it was a zero stakes space to make mistakes and learn from them. I have deeply enjoyed this process of teaching myself to do this thing for no reason beyond my own enjoyment and having stuff that I made at the end of it. And like, nobody is grading the outcome. I am the only judge of my work. Some of the benefit has come from the fact that my need to constantly be doing something with my hands has found a more productive outlet than scrolling Twitter or playing phone games for like hours every single evening. More than that though, sitting at my machine, listening to an audiobook is really soothing. Uh, and it's also nice to be doing something that feels like it's just for me. But also while I was working on those quilts, I was struck by how much I appreciated the thought of these two little babies using these quilts. Yes, I was sewing because it was fun and I was thinking about whatever I was listening to or my day or whatever, but I was also always to some degree thinking about my niece and nephew and how much I love them. And in doing this, I also thought about my own baby blanket that I still have. My paternal grandmother made quilts for every single one of her grandkids when they were born up until her death. And so as much as learning to sew was this thing that I did with my mom, it is also unsurprising <laughs> that I thought a lot about my grandmother while I was making those quilts. I was pretty young when she died, so I never really got to know her. Um, and so this blanket has always been very important to me for that reason. Uh, it is an object that links me to her. I mean, like, <laughs> initially it was a soothing thing for my very small self, but um, I was literally sitting on the couch holding it when I found out that she died. So that connection has always been strongly front of mind for me uh, for about as long as I can remember. But I had never truly understood the amount of time that she had to have put into this and what an act of love that was. I don't really know how best to show this off, but like there is so much detailed stitching on this quilt uh, and she was much better at this than I am and probably had a long arm quilting machine to do it. But even so, uh, this had to have taken a lot of hours. And as I spent all these hours working on that project for these two little humans who I love, 
I kept thinking about how, in a way, it was the most heartfelt thing that I had ever gifted. Uh, I did not know that it would feel that way when I started. I definitely cannot claim that as my intention, but it definitely felt that way by the time I finished. And the more I thought about how much I love these babies, I also found myself thinking about my grandmother and feeling a new sense of connection to her and a renewed sense of gratitude for this gift. One consequence of losing someone when you are very young is the way way in which they become sort of a like myth to you over time uh, and maybe you start to feel like you were one to them like not only did I not get a chance to know her but she never really got to know me um, but I also know how much I love these babies these two people who will ultimately become people who I don't know yet uh, but I still love them so much all the same. I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly, but the point of all of this <laughs> is to say that what was meant to be a cute, fun little project wound up being a profoundly meaningful for me. And this was in January, before we crossed the threshold in which I began to cry every single day and uh, can no longer be asked to account for a single emotion that I felt. I have this thing, sewing, that is, on the one hand, still very much for me, still something that I value for incredibly personal reasons, reasons wrapped up in how it makes me feel to do this thing. But I also feel a particular kind of warm fuzzy when I think about like being able to make gifts of these things because in a way it becomes a gift not only of like the physical object but also in a sense of time. It is a way of saying I spend a lot of hours thinking about you and hoping that you would enjoy this thing. When I made the rainbow cat dress, I made a matching jumpsuit for a friend. And while my friend did split the cost of the fabric, so it's not quite the same thing as like a proper gift, uh, it still gave me a similar sense of joy to think about that object as a physical manifestation of our friendship. After I made the two baby quilts, I made that one. Uh, <laughs> and I started thinking of it as a very particular kind of self-care. Like the, the sewing itself, the act of sewing already was, but maybe the product could be too. I had imagined my niece and nephew being bundled up in those quilts as a kind of remote hug because we live several states away. So like even pre-pandemic distance was a part of my relationship with them. Uh, and I started to think about this as also being like that, as uh, as being a thing that my grandmother left me in that capacity. Um, and that's all where I'm done talking about my grandmother because that I can't. But it also seems reasonable to extend all of that to the way that I think about this quilt um, and, and think about that also as, as being like a hug for myself, a way of being kind and gentle with myself. And when I sit on the couch and wrap myself up in it, I get to feel the particular kind of joy of knowing that I made this cozy hug for myself. Uh, and there is something incredibly fucking cool about that. I am just extremely grateful that 16 years later, <laughs> I found this outlet for myself. Uh, and maybe in some sense I found it at the time when I needed it the most. Uh, this new way of expressing my love for other people, a way of expressing that love that does not require physical proximity. Um, it's a way of feeling connected to people, M my mom and my grandmother and all of the friends who reply to my Instagram stories. Um, and also it is a way of being kind and gentle with myself, that's all. Uh, I would love to hear about any activities or rituals that you have that uh, help you feel connected to the people that you care about, and not just in pandemic terms, because uh, like I feel like that's central to my point here, and I, at this point I think that we should all have figured out that there are so many pieces of our current circumstances that are actually much bigger than this current moment. Anyway, take care of yourselves and your communities. Uh, I will be back here whenever it will feel most aligned with taking care of myself. Okay, bye.